Welcome to Journey to the Savage Planet, it's Abyss, and in this video, I want to talk about some tips and tricks that I wish I knew earlier. Now remember to hit that like button and subscribe to help support the channel. Alright, so let's talk about some tips and tricks that I wish I knew earlier. First, the point of no return. So there is a point of no return, but it's not as big of a deal as you think. Once you get to the final area of the game, you will have to defeat that final boss and then you will be able to go back and collect everything that you missed. But for the time being, while you're in that final area, you will not be able to exit out until you defeat that final boss. So after you do so, then you can go collect everything around the map that you might have missed and then also unlock any other trophy slash achievement that you need to get done. But knowing that there is a small point of no return that you don't have to really worry too much about It'll put your mind at ease so that you can sit back, relax, and enjoy the game. Next, let's talk about farming carbon. So during your first playthrough, you probably won't have to worry too much about this if you are exploring enough and finding carbon veins. But if you're on your second playthrough, and if it is a speed run, I found myself short of carbon all the time. So if you check out the top right corner of the screen, you will notice that I have 63 of 200 carbon. This location I'm at right now is just outside the javelin in the cave. If you kill these puffer birds, they will give you 5 carbon, but if you feed them bait, they will fart out 10. The nice thing about this is you can refill your bait in the same spot. I was short carbon a couple times during my speed run, so keep this in mind. If you need carbon quickly, just go to the first cave right outside your javelin and throw down some bait to farm carbon quickly. Next, let's talk about weak spots. So you're going to find out early in the game that certain enemies can only be defeated by hitting them in their weak spot. It wasn't until later in the game that I realized that we can use a couple items to help out with this situation. First, I was just basically chasing the enemy around the map and then trying to shoot that weak spot, either when it was on the go or whenever it stopped. But if you see what's in my hand, the purple stuff, it is called Binding Bile. If you throw it on the ground like I just did, it'll keep the enemy in place so that you can easily walk up and shoot the weak spot. This is something that I wish I knew earlier. Now there is something else that you can get which is shock fruit and then you can easily zap the enemy. It will keep the enemy in place and shoot the weak spot again. This can be useful for flying enemies because you can easily zap them and keep them in one place because they can be very annoying when they're flying around while you're trying to shoot them. So experiment on different items on enemies and see what you can find useful. Next we're going to talk about alien alloy. Now this is one of seven resources and you would use this to upgrade your weapons and items in a 3D printer. Now there are several ways of finding them and one is the chest that I just showed you and to solve it you will need to scan certain structures around the area. It can be something as simple as the button that I just scanned. Another way you can find alien alloy is through this plant life. It will either begin with combat or vault. This one begins with vault so all you need to do is follow this purple tentacle all the way until you get to the end and you'll notice a pimple on the end of it. All you have to do is shoot the pimple and there will be three of them around the area. Once you shoot all three, then you'll be able to pick up the alien alloy. That's how you get it through this one and then there is another version that begins with combat and in order to get it through that, you will have to defeat the enemies that spawn in around the area. Once you defeat all the enemies, then you will be able to pick up that alien alloy. Now there is an upgrade that you can get later on that will help you find all of these locations on the map. But these are important to get if you want to fully upgrade your weapon and items that are in the 3D printer. Next, we're going to talk about the utility belt. So for this, you're going to start with three items that you can hold and you can easily go to the 3D printer and then upgrade it to five and then 10. On my first playthrough, I upgraded it all the way to 10. And then my second playthrough for the speed run, I just kept it at three and I didn't really worry about it too much, but I could tell the difference between my first and second playthrough. My second one, I just felt like I was running out of items way too quickly. And then my first playthrough, since I had it at 10, it felt like I had enough items that I didn't have to worry about it all the time. So I recommend that you get the best utility belt and upgrade it all the way to 10 as soon as you can possible. Also, you do want to upgrade your weapon so that you can get a little bit more power, reload speed, or more ammo. Next, let's talk about science experiments. So in order to upgrade certain items in a 3D printer, you will need to complete a couple side quests called science experiments. 
First, you will need to craft a live sampler, and then afterwards, there will be a couple challenges that you need to complete in order to go up in rank. The higher rank that you are, the better equipment that you're going to get in a 3D printer. Some of these challenges are easy to complete, and others can be difficult. I will have a full guide on how to complete all of them in the description below. I recommend that you complete these science experiments as soon as you can so that you can take advantage of the upgrades that are in the 3D printer. Next, let's talk about secret nearby. So sometimes you'll hear a notification and then when you look at the top of the screen, it'll come up and say secret nearby and then you will also see a question mark. Some of these are easy enough to find and then others will require certain upgrades. There are a couple items in a 3D printer that will help you locate most of these secrets. The one that I'm at right now just requires the jump thrusters. Once you get up there, you will locate a alien alloy and then also a hidden side quest. So if you're roaming the map and you hear that notification and it comes up and say secret nearby, you definitely want to take the extra time and see if you can find it. You never know what's going to be in there. It could be an alien alloy, maybe an upgrade to your health and stamina or some other part to another side quest. Next, we're going to talk about orange goo. All right, so for this, you'll find out early in the game and this will upgrade your health and stamina. There is a hundred of them located in the map and you can get an upgrade in the 3D printer that will help you locate these better. Now, there are several locations that they're at, like the one that you saw was on the ceiling. There's another one that could be hidden in some grass and there is others that are hidden behind a crack wall. So for example, I went and I picked up in many of them in my first playthrough and didn't really run into any trouble at all. But on my speed run, I decided to only pick up very little. I think it was only three of them. And I could tell the difference with not having any stamina at all, barely being able to run through the map. Plus, my health was low, and that wasn't really a big issue until it came up to boss fights. So I recommend trying to find as many as you can. And when you get that upgrade, you'll be able to locate them better. Next, we're going to talk about bait and slap. Now, in the game, there is a trophy slash achievement that you can unlock called I Come in Peace, where you slap all 37 alien creatures. This one that I'm going to be showing you is a green or pink jelly creature where they fly up in the air. At first, when I was doing this, I was using a double jump and then trying to slap them while they're in the air. This is something I wish I knew earlier. All you have to do is throw down some bait and then they will go to the ground and they can just easily walk up and slap them. I found this by just testing around and that's something I wish I knew earlier because trying to jump around and slap them in the air while they're flying around can be difficult. It's not hard to do, but it can be difficult to do versus just throwing down some bait and then slapping them. Next, let's talk about photo mode. This is one of my favorite features that developers put into the game. I almost feel like this should be mandatory for all games but most developers won't even take the time to do this or they'll just eventually patch it in later. The developers put this in right away, so big ups to them. So what you'll notice is you can actually change the different effects before you take the picture. So if you wanna take a nice fancy little picture and then post it on your social media, you just hit the option button, select photo mode, and there's a couple effects you can change when taking a picture. And last, if you get stuck, just make sure you scan around the area. There could be a structure that you need to scan in order to progress the story or maybe to pick up a side quest. So just make sure you scan and look around the area just in case that you miss something. All right, so there you have it. Those are the tips and tricks that I wish I knew earlier. If there's anything that you'd like to add, then please leave them in the comments down below. But other than that, I hope you all enjoy the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe to support the channel. And I will see you next time.